Hello, Broncos. We are live in Kalamazoo, and I am your gal in Kalamazoo, Kristen DeVries, Vice President for University Advancement. We are so proud of our Broncos. Of course, on Saturday, we had that great game beating Pitt, but we have much, much more than that to talk about today. I am excited this fall. We are back on campus. It is vibrant and alive, and I can't wait to hear from all of you but that'll come a little bit later. I am here in the Gilmore House with President Edward Montgomery, who has been president of WMU since 2017. It is a delight for me to get to work with him, and so I'm happy that today you all get to experience a little bit of what I get to every day. President Montgomery, it is fall on campus for a lot of us. That is our favorite time of year. Uh, we have students coming back. It is so much more vibrant these days uh, than it certainly was last year. How's it been for you? Oh, it's fantastic. You know, you, you see the students walking around. You get reminded both how old I am now, but how much fun it comes with having our students present. Uh, you know, we've got 75% of our classes are in person. Uh, the students are, the residents halls are actually filled uh, and uh, the student life is, is is back and whether you're talking about I went and met with the R RSOs the registered student organizations and last year when we were doing virtual maybe there were 10 kids in the room now they're all there because each one of their clubs, whether you're talking about sports clubs, chess clubs, uh, e-sports, whatever it is, uh, want to be back and be engaged in student life and it makes the campus a vibrant place to be at. One of the things over the past year that got very much disrupted in our economy was travel. And travel, of course, included the airline industry. And Western is kind of known for our aviation and airline programs. What are we doing to help our aviation students so that they can weather the ups and downs that are inevitable in their industry, um, but also position them to be at the top of that industry? Well, you know, last year, uh, even in the, the, when COVID was at its peak, we managed to continue to have our aviation students learning and training. They put plexiglass shields and took a whole bunch of safety precautions. They were tested on a regular basis. And so the students were able to continue to fly. Mm -hmm. This year, just uh, this uh, last week, we got to open the new Aviation Education Center, an absolutely breath breathtaking state-of-the-art facility. Uh, as soon as I walked in, there were three or four students working on computers. I said, do you like this place? They said it is home. They were just incredibly excited about being here. It's because of the quality of the programming. It's the quality of the faculty that we have what is now the third largest aviation program in the country. It's one of the only ones with partnerships with United Airlines, with Delta Airlines, with American Airlines. Uh, it's ranked in the top three in the country as well. So it's not just big, it's excellent. Uh, and now they have a facility that will allow our next generation of students to get the kind of training they deserve in a facility that brings them together, but it keeps them at the cutting edge of aviation because as you said, this is a growth industry. It's an industry that's going to grow about 11% over the course of the next decade. And the job that Captain Powell, Dean Powell has done to bring together a team is really cutting edge and is really placing our students at the leadership positions. Well, aviation is not the only thing that is changing and growing. You and I both have uh, young people in their 20s in our households. And uh, we know that 20 years from now, they're probably going to have very different jobs than the ones that they're doing today. What's Western doing to prepare our students for jobs that haven't even really been invented yet? You know, th this, this is one of the challenges for universities because we know that a typical person is going to go through five, six, ten different uh, jobs over the course of their uh, career. We know that uh, the half-life or the length of time a typical skill lasts is about three or four years. And so when I'm thinking about preparing you as a freshman, by the time you're senior, that skill may not be uh, in, in place anymore. And so what we have to do is prepare people to learn, to continue to be able to update themselves, uh, both with cutting edge technology for today and the skills that are on, on, on the front lines, but also how do I position you to learn and adapt to the next set of skills. 
And a lot of the skills of tomorrow are the things which are uniquely human. That ability to communicate, that ability to lead, that ability to interact with people, that ability to adjust to situations you never could have imagined. And so our curriculum is doing that, our faculty are doing that. We're trying to do it both in the classroom and out of classroom. Lots more emphasis on experiential learning, a lot more emphasis on internships, job, job uh, careers from day one, uh, so that students can get matched up and see how the different occupations they may be thinking of are involved. We've got a signature program, which is a real leadership opportunity where students can pick areas which is their own passion. Get an opportunity to design experiences, work with a faculty member, work with a community member so they can get that recognized and actually get it put on their diploma as part of the, the way they're moving the education forward. So we're doing lots of things to make sure they have the skills, to find their passion, to make sure that they are resilient. Because one of the things we know they have to deal with is change. And change can be hard. It can be hard on you physically, mentally, but those who can persist, those who have, some people call it grit, whatever you want to call it, uh, are the ones who are going to get ahead. And that's what Broncos are. They're smart, they have resilience, uh, they're well-rounded, they have a passion uh, for their future, and that's what the university is drawing out with our faculty all across the board. Well, that was a good sales pitch, but if our <laughs> alumni <laughs> are giving their own sales pitch for the university, uh, the folks we're talking about this evening, I'm sure have a lot of young people in their communities and they'd love to talk about Western and why they should go to Western. What would you like them saying to those young people? So l let me tell a story. Uh, just this morning, I got an email from a faculty member who hadn't heard from this student who was in his class 13 years ago. And this student said, I've been meaning to write you every day because your class brought to life my field. This kid is now, this is not a kid, it's a young, young man, is a science teacher. And he got a, a whole new perspective on science, on his field, because of this faculty member. He said, and every day when I go in and teach the next generation, it's because of what you did. And so that's what makes Western a special place. It's a place that takes students, excites them, where faculty are shown time and time again to care about you, not just as a student, but as a person that help you realize your potential so that you can go out and pay, pay it forward to the next generation. So that's what makes Western special. It's the people, it's that hands-on experience, it's the caring, and it's the opportunities that re represented at our campus. Any last thoughts you'd like to leave our watchers with? Well, you know, I, I would invite them to come back. You know, we've got uh, homecoming coming up. We'd love to have people come back and be engaged. We've got a car parade. We've got a whole variety of activities on campus. There's theater in the park uh, last year. Uh, the theater department is putting out plays outside, uh, musicals. Uh, there's lots of activities. It's always a great day to be Bronco. Come back and be part of the community. Go Broncos. Go Broncos. And now I am so excited to introduce you to Eric. Eric is a young man I've been getting to know over this past fall as he is the executive vice president for Western Student Association. He is also studying aviation. He graduated from Greenfield High School in Greenfield, Wisconsin and a very proud Bronco. Here's Eric. My name's Eric Effinger. I'm a third year student in the College of Aviation. I am double majoring in aviation flight science and aviation management and operations with a double minor in German and general business. I am currently the student body vice president, the vice president for the Aviation Student Council. Uh, I am a Lee Honors College student working on my undergraduate thesis. In high school, I had considered going for aeronautical engineering. I had the epiphany, why design the planes when I could fly them? I applied at Purdue and I applied at Western. And Western, they were very communicative, they were very welcoming. Touring on campus, it felt like home from the day I stepped on campus. So the atmosphere is what drew me into Western and I'm so happy I made the choice to be here. So I was born and raised in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area, specifically Greenfield. There's so much to do in Milwaukee. Um, the community is phenomenal, extremely culturally diverse. Um, Milwaukee is known for hosting numerous cultural festivities throughout summer. Definitely a, a great, great place to be from, great community, awesome food. Sports teams are phenomenal. Uh, you got the Brewers and just to the north you got the Green Bay Packers. Can't go wrong with them. Don't kill me for saying that. <laughs> 
The city of Milwaukee has always had a strong German heritage. What got me really intrigued is my junior year of high school, I was a foreign exchange student to Germany. And that was the first time that I had flown on a plane that I could remember. I was lucky in that there are very few aviation colleges across the nation. The top four that came up, Purdue, Embry-Riddle, uh, North Dakota, and Western. I think Western reflects Milwaukee a lot in its diversity and its inclusion. We have a lot of culturally and racially diverse organizations on campus. We have International Fest. Also, Kalamazoo is a great spot for the arts. So I think Western has a lot of the same values of my home city, and they have the venues to make those values known and heard. Because of my experiences here at Western and, my, and the wonderful faculty members and classes I've taken, I recently uh, secured a position in the United Aviate program. Professor McLean has been a role model to me throughout my time at Western. She has taught me so much, not only in academia, but life skills. I mean, thank you just doesn't sound like enough. <laughs> They've truly inspired me. They've pushed me harder than I thought I could go. 200,000 Broncos worldwide that I already have a connection with before I go into the workplace. Western's, you know, going to affect you long after I leave here. That's a foot in the door before I even graduate into a legacy airline in the United States. After I graduate, I get to work for the university as a CFI, go to a regional airline partnered with United, and then I'm off to United in the right seat as a first officer and that would not have been possible without attending Western. Next up, we have a special treat you're going to hear from Valeria. Valeria is from Malaysia and is studying communications and social psychology, and she's the recipient of the Dieter Henneke Scholarship. Just to get that scholarship and then to keep it, you have to have a very high GPA. So I know you will be very pleased to hear from the intelligent Valeria. My name is Valeria Stefanuti Gan, and basically I'm double majoring in the sociology, social psychology, and communications. My aunt and my mom and my dad and even my uncles, they've all come to US to study. And basically that's what they wanted me to do as well, follow in their footsteps. So I had a transfer program in Malaysia for two years there and two years here. I have that scholarship here so that that's one of the main reasons why I'm even able to come here. Michigan is a very, very different place compared to Malaysia. From where I'm from, it's Kuala Lumpur. It's our main city. It's like a melting pot where we have three different main races over there. So one of the biggest things about Malaysians, you could ask anyone, is that we really care and prioritize about our food and we really, we're really proud of it. Meeting the people here, they're so much friendlier than I expected. Um, and the school is much big, the campus is so much bigger than I expected because everything is packed up in Malaysia in this little city, but it's really fun to be able to walk around campus and experience the, the nature and the views. I mean, so far I just really love the experience here in Western and I'm doing well in terms of my studying and my grades and, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for much more. One of my hopes or one of my dreams and goals is that I want to also be a professor. So like seeing other professors um, and the way they teach and the way they act around students, you know, is really important to me. Hopefully teach a class of mine one day, hopefully getting masters and a PhD. I've worked in the dining centers. I've worked in two different dining centers. I worked in the student recreation center and now I'm also working here in the alumni association call center. I just really appreciate that there's still a connection that at least we're reaching out to the alumni and you know you still send like newsletter or there's still information and still updates like it just feels like you're still a bronco and that you're still connected to the university. I keep pushing myself every single day um, by saying yes to a lot of things and just going along with it. And it really like brought me to a lot of different places and met a lot of different people. And I really think like now I'm kind of like, I don't want to live life regretting anything. And my way forward into my future is that I want to do everything that I possibly can, that I'll, I'll, I'll just try. I'll always give it a shot. Um, even if it's out of my comfort zone, I'll be like, yeah, sure, why not? I don't want to be in the future and thinking like I could have or yeah, like I should have when I could just do it now.
here in college in my youth and I have time. And next, I'll introduce you to Courtney. She is an alum who studied criminal justice and now she works for the Van Buren Department of Corrections as a communications coordinator, but she is also our head cheerleading coach. I think you're going to really enjoy hearing her perspective as a former student and current employee and one who gets to say, go Broncos all the time. Here's Courtney. My name is Courtney Mahalka. I am the head cheerleading coach here at Western Michigan. Graduated from Western in 2011 and I was on the cheer team for three years and um, in 2017 at the time the head coach reached out to me. He was actually my coach as well and wanted me to come on and help with the all girl side of the program. Um, and I have been here ever since 2017 and recently took over the program in August of this year. Cheerleading is a huge passion of mine. I cheered all throughout my high school career and then my college career. So being able to share the passion with young students and athletes is just, an honor to be here back at my alma mater. We have pretty intense practices throughout the summer to prepare. We have so much material we need to know um, to be out on that field so that we can perform. So it's more than just shaking our pom-poms as everybody sees us. For home football game, what we do is hold a practice on the football field so everybody is familiar with their field placement um, because we do our pre-game performance and then all of the um, through the game performances as well. Um, we also require that each athlete complete a game day tryout so that we can ensure that they know all of their game material and they're ready to actually hit the field. Going to U of M was amazing, not only for um, as a coach, um, I did get to experience that while I was on the cheer team, but as a coach, it was so great to see the athletes in how at the biggest football stadium um, for college, see our students just take it all in and how excited they were. It was an honor that athletics was able to take us. But as an alumni, it's nice to sit back and just watch everything and be able to witness all of those same experiences or similar experiences as an alumni. So it's amazing to see these young athletes come in and they're so eager to learn um, how collegiate sports run and how our program is. So it is, it is truly a sport and it is very hard work. And now it's time for me to introduce you to a Marine Corps veteran, a trombonist, and a conductor who currently serves as the director of the Bronco Marching Band. He's also a member of the faculty in our School of Music, is very active all over campus ever since he joined us in 2019 from Kennesaw State in Georgia. We're very proud to have Trey directing the Bronco Marching Band. I'm Dr. Trey Harris. I'm the director of the Bronco Marching Band here at Western Michigan University. We rehearse Monday through Friday and we play at, at all home football games as well as select away games and, and postseason things. If I could pick what my responsibilities were, these are the ones that I would pick. So I really enjoy the pedagogy of teaching conducting, so I get to do that. But then one of my absolute passions is collegiate athletics. We always do one song to the student section, and, and we, don't just, we don't just arc up and play to them, but we actually march and, and face that direction. And they, I mean, they pulled out their cell phones and had the, the flashlights on and were waving up, up in the air. And then when it got to the chorus of the song that we played, I mean, they went bananas. And I hope that they also saw the reaction of the band in response because the band kicked it up a notch as well once, once they saw and, and felt that, that engagement from, from the student section. So obviously our alumni understand the amount of work that goes into every show, both behind the scenes, but also the number of hours that our students put in. Uh, there were over 109,000 people at that game and, and we made up about 250 of them. 
but it was just, I mean, it, it was so great for our students to see an environment of that scale. Uh, it was, it was just, it was an electric environment and I, it's irreplaceable for our students to see what it's like on that scale and to then bring it home. And, and, and our students want to encourage Western fans to, to participate in that way. And that's, that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, our call time typically is six hours before kickoff. We're, we're putting a new show together for the, the game on September 25th. And we've spent the last two days almost exclusively doing music rehearsal. I don't think that there's a harder working band in the country than, than the Bronco Marching Band. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really want to hear from you now. Can you please email me at kristen.devries at wmitch.edu. As we do future versions of this, I want to know what would you like to hear about? Who would you like to hear from? Please do let me know. Also, don't forget to visit wmualumni.org and there you can learn the many ways that you can participate with us during homecoming week. It's coming up October 11th through the 16th and we have both in-person and virtual ways that you can join us and celebrate all that it means to be a Bronco. Thank you so much. We're gonna close you out with a special performance by the Bronco Marching Band. Go Broncos. WMU Dance Team in this hometown favorite. I've got a gal in Kalamazoo.